this room than anywhere else. It's on your radio right now. Do you know how to pop that coochie for a green? There you go. It's the world's most dangerous one to show. Got the cameras. I'm out the f- <laughs> <laughs> What kind of Greek? What kind of show is this? <laughs> My son club. listens to this show. Breakfast Club. With DJ Envy. The captain of this b- With Angela Yee, the only one who can keep these guys in check. Charlemagne the God. I'm a lovable asshole. And this is the Breakfast Club, bitches. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 Good morning, Angela Yee. Good morning, DJ Envy. Charlemagne the God. Peace to the planet. It's Tuesday. Yes, good morning. It's Tuesday. Why do I feel so loud today? How are y'all? Three-day weekend. How's everybody doing? Oh, man, I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, man. You know? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling good. I actually had a good time. I heard, you know, they're doing that Living Black. I know we're all participating in that. Mm-hmm. And I got to sit down with three women, uh, three black women who own their own small businesses and do these uh, conversations. I actually loved it. I was so inspired. I had such a great weekend because dope, of them. Dope. I got to do mine this weekend. I'm excited about that. I think we're doing, a, me and my wife are doing a, uh, some couple stuff, so I can't wait to do that. But this weekend was all about family. I, I took my, um, shout to the New York Knicks. I took my son to the Knicks game. They lost, but... We had a good time. It was it was it was less about the game, more about just hanging with my son, bonding with my son. Uh, you had two of your sons in that picture, right? No, that wasn't my son. That was. Yeah, I don't believe you. That, that little boy looked like a Casey to me. Nah, <laughs> that looked, was Randall's son, actually. Really? Yeah. He looked just like that one was of Randall's yours. son. Yeah. I was like, why? Are everybody you like you don't know that little boy. Everybody was saying that. Hey, you got another son there? I never seen that son. Who's that other son? Yeah. I was like, what city is he named after? Yeah. So shout to the New York Knicks. We uh, <laughs> shut up, man. We had a great time at the game. I seen Pat Poos at the game too. Pat Poos sat right next to me too. So okay. Pat. We had a, a great. Like I said, it was just bonding, man. Just bonding time. And then me and my daughter. I, I, I'm getting my real estate license. Mm-hmm. Me too. Um, my daughter is actually taking real estate and environmental real estate in college as a major. And she's taking her, she's getting her license. So I decided to get mine. I don't need it for what I'm doing, but I just want it. I want to know as much knowledge in the real estate business as possible. So uh, I'm taking, I started taking those classes with her, which was uh, pretty interesting. I That's took crazy. all the classes online already, but you got to take the test in person. So. I just have to take the test. But what's good about having your real estate license is you can only get paid for real estate if you're licensed. So if you give a referral to a realtor mm-hmm. or, a, or a broker, then the only way to get paid legally is if you have your license. So that's Correct. why it's a good thing. That's crazy. When you asked me what, what what we did this week, and all I could think about was nothing. And then I'm like, oh, I'm a dad. Yeah. I was doing cheer dad stuff all weekend. Yeah. I was cheerleading competitions all weekend long. Yeah, I spoke to you over the weekend. I was here, wow, I was saying all types of stuff. Oh, where the Lord. hell are you? Somewhere asleep <laughs> in the cheerleading competition, <laughs> yeah, like, knocked where the out. Hell are you, getting man? woke up whenever it was her turn to go on <laughs> <laughs> in that drooling. Yo, them competitions be the longest you're there for like man, 10 you hours. You ain't got to tell they me. They perform for like three minutes. You ain't got to tell and me. And you just got to sit. Then I forgot my book too. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. I looked at my book back and realized I forgot my book. I was like, Lord have mercy. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't like to uh, be sitting in those situations and just pull out your phone. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, you know, I feel like the phone is like junk food, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, you use it sparingly, so Correct. I don't want to just be using it just to use it. And I forgot my book, so I was like, well, no better place to take a nap, <laughs> <laughs> right here. <laughs> just wake me up when it's her turn. My goodness. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Front page news. What are we talking about? Well, as you know, yesterday was Martin Luther King Day, and they are asking. For the Senate to act on voting rights, we'll tell you what was said. <laughs> All right, we'll get into that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now in football. All right, the Bengals beat the Raiders. The Bills beat the Patriots. The Buccaneers beat the Eagles. The Chiefs beat the Steelers. The Rams beat the Cardinals. Now in some Cowboy news, we got some crazy fans with some crazy talk. We are swept the NFC East this year. 6-0 in the NFC That's East. Not none of them bum-ass teams beat us. That's a fact. Done. Be finished. Nah, until we beat the 49ers <laughs> next week. Okay. On our way to the All Super Bowl, right. baby. All right. So what does it mean? What does that mean? Your Cowboys ain't going to do nothing anyway. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't never do nothing. All you Cowboys, it's me, Super Bowl. In Trevin Diggs, we trust. And Dak Prescott, we trust. Dropping the clues bombs for my Dallas Cowboys. We did lose our Are quarterback you there, from a concussion. And it's also me, Super Bowl. The Saquon new Barkley book had to go by Charlemagne the God ankle. and Judy Bloom coming out on Black Privilege Publishing. Are you there, God? Are you there, Cowboys? It's me, Super Bowl. What's changed? I just pushed the book back here. 
Uh, how'd your Cowboys do? I saw a lot just, of memes. I, I just pushed the I pushed the book back here. We'll <laughs> win next year. What are you talking about? What's changed? <laughs> I wasn't talking about this year. I was talking about next year. Yeah, this is, it was changed. I was oh. pushing back here. We'll be ready next year. <laughs> you got to fire Mike McCarthy. Get that bum-ass Mike McCarthy out there and bring in uh, Eric Benamy from the Kansas City Chiefs, offensive coordinator. He'll write the ship. By the way, that's what we, us Cowboys need to do. Fire Mike McCarthy, hire uh, Eric Benamy. No, okay, bring in Eric Benamy. Well, the Cowboys lost over the weekend to the 49ers, 23-17. Trev, where you at, Trev? How you feeling out there, Cowboys Trav? fans ain't going nowhere. I'm 43 years old. I've been a Cowboy fan my whole life, okay? Sorry for you. This year don't phase me, all right? It feel like the other 26 years, okay, <laughs> that we've been losing, all right? I'm cool. Y'all almost came back, though. Y'all Man, almost came back. you know, whatever. That's the story of being a Cowboys fan. We make the game exciting. It's going to be so boring without us for the next few weeks. No, I think it's going to be exciting. <laughs> okay. What else we got, Easy? All right, well, let's talk about voting rights and Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Now, uh, they actually had a part of the Martin Luther King Jr. Day D.C. Peace Walk. The King family and more than 100 national and local civil rights groups walked across the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge, and they were calling on Joe Biden and the Democrats to pass a bill <laughs> in the U.S. Senate. And as you know, people are urging oh, Senate God. colleagues to change filibuster rules so they can overcome Republican opposition to the bill. Also, two conservative Democrats, we all know, who have been holding veto power in the evenly split chamber. Here is what Joe Biden had to say speaking on MLK's legacy. The promise it holds that we're all created equal and deserve to be treated equally throughout our lives. Dr. King wasn't just a dreamer of that promise. He was a doer. And on this federal holiday that honors him, it's not just enough to praise him. We must commit to his unfinished work to deliver jobs and justice, to protect the sacred right to vote, the right from which all other rights flow. Now, here's what Joe Biden had to say about voter suppression. We're in another moment right now where the mirror is being held up to America, being held up again. The question being asked again, where do we stand? Will we stand against voter suppression, yes or no? Will we stand against election subversion, yes or no? I know where I stand. And it's time for every elected official in America to make it clear where they stand. It's time for every American to stand up, speak out, be heard. Where do you stand? Whose side are you on? At some point when a country shows you who they are, we must believe them. Okay, this is America. Trust me, when they look in the mirror, they don't see what we see. And since last summer, I think 18 states have enacted 30 new laws that make it harder to vote. And now all of a sudden, this administration is pushing for the Senate to do something. These folks be talking like democracy is at stake, but they don't govern like it. Does this sound like he had a sense of urgency in his voice? Not at all. <laughs> now, Martin Luther King Jr.'s eldest son also condemned federal lawmakers over their inaction. He spoke in D.C. yesterday. Martin Luther King III said he was marking the federal holiday name for his father. But he wasn't there to celebrate. He was there because he wants Congress and President Joe Biden to pass a sweeping legislation that would help ease Republican-led voting restrictions that have been passed in at least 19 states that make it a lot more difficult to be able to cast your ballot. Hey, man, if there's a sense of urgency, call out the people in your party who are blocking progress. Pull Manchin and Sinema's card, you know? It's easy to blame the Republicans. We know where they stand, but why can't the two people in your party, why, they, why are all y'all not in the same game? Huh? Why y'all not moving on one accord? Call them out. Because guess what? If they was in the Republican Party, Donald Trump would have called them out already. We saw that last week on that NPR interview when he called out Mitch McConnell and all those Arizona GOP legislators who blocked him from uh, staying in the White House. Mm -hmm. So Biden should have that same type of, that bigger, if you ask me. But, you know, at some point, like I said, when the country shows you who they are, we must believe them. All right, well, that is your front page news. All right, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. How was your three-day weekend? What did you do? Was it great? Was it horrible? Did you feel blessed? I'm always blessed. Call us up right now, 800-585-1051. Maybe your, your, your favorite football team lost. What does that mean? I'm talking to we the still, people. We still, we, still, we still the universe's team. Don't take it personal. I thought the Buccaneers are. 800-585-1051. Call us right now. Get it off your chest. Let us know how your weekend was. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Oh, what's up, man? It's Will. Well, what's up? Get it off your chest, bro. 
Good morning, Yee. Good morning, um, MB. Good morning, Charlemagne. Good morning. Peace, King. How you doing, Black Man? What's up, brother? I'm good, my brother. Listen, I want to send my man Charlemagne some healing energy, bro. I'm, I'm sorry about the Cowboys, you know. <laughs> What's your team? Uh, bro, don't look. I'm just <laughs> asking a question. I just <laughs> asked a simple <laughs> question. What's your team? It's, it's the Saints, dog. It's the Saints. Okay, so I'm sending you. I'm sending you healing energy as well. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Listen, I, I, I need you to send me one more thing, man. Can I get a book from you, B Dub? I got you. You know, so, what, what, which one you want? I got. Uh, I'm gonna send you. Which one you want? I'm gonna send you Dr. Rita want, Walker, the yeah, unapologetic yeah, guide to Black Mental Health. I want, I want. You got kids? Yeah, I want to get that for my wife, man. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna send you um Anita Kopak Shallow Waters too. Then that's a good. It's a good fiction book to read. I'm gonna send you that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I got you, brother. Right, brother. Hold on, okay. Hello, who's this? Oh, this is Patrick. Hey, Patrick, what's up? Get it off your chest. Uh, I just want to say good morning to Angela Lee, DJ Envy, and Charlemagne the God. Good morning. I've been listening to since high school. So, um, I'm from Detroit. I recently moved to Vegas, and I stayed up. Just to go make sure I can call in and Aww. tell Charlemagne, <laughs> your Cowboys, they always suck me. Go, 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 be trash forever. <laughs> who's your team? Who's your team, I'm sir? Glad you up. <laughs> the team that just whooped you off, San Fran. Oh, your your 49ers fan. Okay, you, you you can talk then. I'll allow you to talk. I'll allow you to get it off. But also, dude, also to Charlemagne, I want to thank you for the uh, you know putting out those books out there for us to read. I recently just went and picked up. Set Brownies and Fine Peace yesterday. Oh, by uh, Dr. Nadra Glover. Yes, sir. Amazing read, man. Amazing read. She's yeah. incredible. You should follow her on Instagram, too. I love Dr. Nadra. Man, I will do. Uh, like I said, y'all just go ahead and y'all have a blessed day and keep doing what y'all doing. I appreciate y'all. Yes, sir. Right, I appreciate you, you, brother. You can go to sleep now. Hello, who's this? Yeah, he's waiting all morning. <laughs> Probably been up since Sunday. Couldn't wait <laughs> to talk to me to tell up? me that. What up, what up, bro? Get it off your chest. Man, so look, right? I just got this job up here at this school and not understanding the weather conditions. Mm -hmm. It's cold as I don't know what. Like, it's freezing cold. It's cold. They you told us, they, they told us we had to keep our bay doors open. Like, it's not a whole bunch of sickness going on out here. You got shrinkage? You said, do I got what? Shrinkage. <laughs> nah, nah, I don't go through that. Well, it ain't that cold then. <laughs> It's not. I mean, well, it's just it's not. You got your whole crew saying they about to quit. If your testicles ain't like, you know, getting tighter together. My goodness. And they look a little smaller when you pee pee. Ain't that cold. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that cold. Well, I've been blessed by the both sides, so I don't get phased by that. <laughs> oh, on. okay. You don't notice it. Okay. I get what you're saying. Have a good one, brother. <laughs> Get it off your chest. One man shrinkage is another man's average. Five eight five one zero five one. Call us now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's go. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. Say it with your chest. We want to hear from you on the Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? Hey man, it's Q. Q, what's up, Q? Get it off your chest. Yeah, I just Ta had a beautiful baby shower this weekend with the beautiful love of my life, China. Um, it was a success, man. It was my first one. It was our first baby shower. Uh, and I just wanted to say, Charlotte, man, I love what you're doing, bro. Everything that you're doing, man. The God's honest truth, that show is fire, bro. Thank you, King. You can scream it on Paramount Plus right now. <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, uh, thanks. Thanks for everything, man. I appreciate y'all for letting me on this morning. Have a good morning. Everybody have a blessed morning. All right, bro. Good luck with Blessings, the baby. Blessings, brother. brother. Hello, who's this? Yo, this is DJ Echo from the 757. Echo, what up, brother? Get you should never chest. say your name without saying Echo, 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 Echo. <laughs> yeah, um, get it off my chest, man. Just want to say good morning to y'all. I uh, want to congratulate my daughter, man, Cameron Urquhart. She, um, she's a mom. She's a wife. She uh, graduated from LU, and it's just past week she just graduated from the Air Force. Just want to congratulate her on that. She's going to be doing mental health, helping folks out. Okay. Right. How old is she, King? 28. She's turning 28 uh, July. I, 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 you know, I got four daughters, so I just be sitting back, you know, just wondering, like, how does that feel just watching them get older? Just to say she's a wife and, you know, mother. Like, how does that feel as a dad? Um, it, she did it the right way. You know what I mean? She went to college, got married, had a kid, starting a career. Dope. Proud of it. She made me. She keep me in line. There you go. Dope. Love to hear it, Ken. Not ready for that yet, though. But you did a great job, brother. Yeah, you, you did, did a, a great job, job, black brother. man. Congrats to hey, you. Look, that's, 
Yeah, that's one of my best friends in this world. I do everything for her. And uh, Charlemagne, also too, man. I sent you an inbox on uh, Instagram, man. I'm a I'm a white guy, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm all about uh, racial re- uh, reconciliation. And I sent you a picture of my hoodie on my on me trying to help this world be uh, reconciled. Oh, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't check my Instagram DMs. You can mail, you can mail it up here though. I wear. It. Yeah, it's it. So I'm a, I'm a white dude, and I got a hoodie that says I love black women, and I, and I, and I, rock, <laughs> thing, I rock that thing everywhere. There you go. <laughs> That's dope. I appreciate that. I need that. Well, you have a good one, brother. Yes, sir. Y'all too. All right, man. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now we got rumors on the way? Yes, and Envy is obsessed with this story. Uh, Pastor Michael Todd rubbing spit on his brother's face. I ain't obsessed with it. That just seems wild to me, but all right. (laughs) We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. (laughs) Happy Tuesday. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get mm-hmm. to the rumors. Let's talk Stephen A. Smith. It's about time. What's going on? Yeah. Rumor report. Rumor report. This is the rumor report talk to him. with Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Stephen A. Smith actually had a really scary bout with COVID. He said he didn't know if he was going to make it. Uh, and he returned the first take to give a PSA about his experience with COVID. I had a 103 degree fever every night. Mm. Woke up with chills and pool of sweat. Uh, headaches were massive, coughing profusely. And it got to a point that right before New Year's Eve, I was in a hospital New Year's Eve into New Year's Day. That's how I brought in the new year. And they told me, had I not been vaccinated, I wouldn't be here. That's how bad I was. He had pneumonia in both lungs. His liver mm. was bad. He said he has to monitor his volume. Even now, he gets to the gym every day, walk before you run. And he said he's still not 100%, but he is COVID negative, and he is on the road to recovery. He said his sister smokes. She had COVID and was fine in three to four days. He said, me, I don't smoke, and it almost took me out. Everybody's different. Hey, man, Stephen A., I'm glad you're still here, brother. Okay? Absolutely. You should have waited to tell that story today because, trust me, there was a lot of Cowboy fans who did not feel sorry for him yesterday. I wasn't one of them, but I'm sure there was a few out there who's like, we don't care. And I saw Danny Lay and her daughter also uh, had COVID. She posted on Twitter that she and her five-month-old had been diagnosed, but they are okay. Uh, she said, appreciate prayer, stay masked up, and stay inside, y'all. That's something that Stephen A. said yesterday I thought was very important, too. He was just talking about, you know, he's not here to stress whether or not you should get the vaccine, but uh, he thinks everybody should wear a mask because of the fact everybody doesn't react to COVID the same way. Correct. All right, now Cardi B said she's strongly considering getting her son's name tattooed on her face. She posted random, but I'm 1% close to tatting my son's name on my face. I really, really want to do it. And she said she wants to get it on her jaw. So there you have it, a tattoo on the face. What's her uh, son's name? We, they haven't revealed it yet, oh, so that would be a great way gotcha. to reveal what her son's name is. Gotcha. You just tattoo it on your face. All right, and speaking of tattoos, Mike Tyson, some people were saying that he's going to be fighting Jake Paul. There was a report that came out in The Sun where they said that they were in advance talks for a $49 million boxing match. Well, Mike Tyson is saying, this is news to me. I just saw Jake in St. Bart's, and he never mentioned it. So he wrote that on Twitter. So it looks like that's not going to be happening. Well, yeah, they heard- said that wasn't going to happen. They- they just haven't signed that paperwork. I think they'll do it for forty nine million dollars. Well, he said it's new to him. So yeah, last year I heard Jake and I mean not Jake, uh, Mike Tyson and Logan Paul was supposed to fight. I didn't hear nothing about Jake. Well, I don't know, but the Sun published that report, and Mike Tyson is saying it's new to him. Mm-hmm. All right, Jess Hilarious uh, performed sober for the first time in her stand up comedy career. She said, been doing this ish for five years. On Friday in Philly was my first time being sober and felt like I was at my funniest. I was quicker, sharper, and timing was impeccable. However, that was also my first time being nervous. A good nervous, that is, because they were all there to see me, but nervous nonetheless. Now that I know I can do this ish sober and do it well, almost better than when I'm under any influence, I'm ready to give y'all a special coming soon. Remember this. Drop on the clues bombs for Big Jess Hilarious. Jess just scratching the surface of... uh you know, her potential. She's really, really, truly just getting started. And make sure y'all listen to that Carefully Reckless podcast on the Black Effect Podcast Network, hosted by Jess Hilarious. 
And I know sometimes people feel like they need liquor as a crutch and give you that liquid courage. But it's good to see that she knows she doesn't need to ha- uh, do that. Not at all. Just as, mm-hmm. And she's naturally funny, just in conversation. Like, not even just on stage or on her sketches on Instagram, just in regular life. She's just a funny person. All right, now let's talk about Tulsa pastor Michael Todd. And you know him as the best-selling author of Relationship Goals as well. He leads the Transformation Church in Tulsa. And so there were a lot of reactions after his congregation Sunday during his service. It was being streamed for people at home, and he actually ended up wiping his own spit all over his brother's face. Here's what happened. (coughs) God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally Mm -hmm. be able to stand? When getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty. Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. What what I'm telling you is how you just reacted is how the people in your life will react. When God is doing what it takes for the miracle, what are you saying? This man was blind and what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. This is my first time hearing that. When I saw the headline, I knew that he was probably uh, talking about Mark eight twenty three when Jesus took the blind man and spit in his eye. <laughs> right, and he's saying that receiving vision from God might get nasty. That was part of the purpose of what he was having to say. But uh, he posted afterwards an apology. He said, it's never my intention to distract others from God's word and the message of Jesus, even with illustrations. I apologize for my example being too extreme and disgusting. I love everybody. Hashtag represent. Mm -hmm. And here's what he said in that post as well. It was disgusting. (laughs) Like that was gross. (laughs) That was a distraction to what I was really trying to do. I was really trying to make the word come alive and for people to see the story. I just want to make sure people know that we want to help people. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to feel loved. I'm passionate about that so much so that I try to do extreme things to help people get it. And yesterday it crossed the line. When Jesus uh, spit on that man, he was blind and then he could see. Um, For my brother who I love and uh, honor so much, I just called him. He was bald before I spit on him and he's still bald today. So no miracle here. Tell, I'm confused. Was he playing God by spitting in his hand and wiping it on that man's face? I think he was trying to evoke uh, Mark 8, 23 when Jesus took the blind man and spit in his eye and asked him if he could see. Listen, this is a lot he wasn't of... blind. The guy wasn't blind. No, he wasn't. But he yeah. was just saying that it can get nasty when you get a uh, vision from God. It doesn't have to be pretty. It can get really nasty. It's a lot of things in the Bible. I don't know if we're supposed to take it literally. It's a lot of things that folks did in the Bible that would get you canceled now. So it makes you wonder, should I care what people think or should I stick to what Scripture says? Mm. Scripture says, should I care what people think or should I move how these folks moved in the Bible? Would these people have outrage watching Jesus spit in that blind man's eye? I'm just asking he's, questions. He's That's not all. Jesus, but you, you're bald. Mm-hmm. Want to try something? No. I'm just asking questions because I see the outrage, you know, uh, directed toward Pastor Todd, but it is rooted in Scripture. So are we ready to admit that it might be a lot of things in the Bible that are simply outdated? It's a lot of things in the Bible that y'all cancel people for, but are you ready to cancel the Bible? Can we talk about this this morning? I want to talk. But why'd he spit in his hand if the man ain't blind? I ain't see the video, okay? I just know Mark 8, 23. Then he wiped it on his his face, the, the man's face. Like, was he So when like Jesus, Jesus spit in the blind man's eye, it was just a direct shot? Like, boom! I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> now, listen. I wasn't there. Listen, what if the man wasn't really blind? Jesus was just wiping coal out his eye like how our mama used to do when she used to lick her thumb and then wipe wipe your eye. You know what I'm saying? You could see a little better. Yeah. What if the guy wasn't really blind? He just, you know, needed a little bit of... Douche. A little shot, shot. But if he, if he wasn't if he wasn't blind, then why'd he do it? Was he trying to fix his, his man? I don't know. Okay, I ain't no pastor. All right. All right. All right. Well, that but is Mike your Todd is, report. and he just confused me, so I don't know. <laughs> I want to talk about it this morning. Though. Can we talk about it after? Absolutely. This hour? After front page news, we yes. got front page news next. What are we talking about? I just want to know what people think. Yes, we are going to be talking about uh, COVID and what they're saying right now with Omicron and what Dr. Fauci has to say, what the future is looking like. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's go! It's time to wake up. Yeah. It's The Breakfast Club. It's going going down. Angela Yee here, and my friends at The General Insurance give you quality car insurance for less. Check out their affordable rates and flexible payment options by calling 800-GENERAL or visiting thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. 
Hey, morning everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now the Rams beat the Cardinals in the NFL. The Bengals beat the Raiders. The Bills beat the Patriots. The Bucks beat the Eagles. The Chiefs beat the Steelers. And Cowboy fans, oh my gosh, they're delirious. We have some audio from a Cowboy fan. We are swept the NFC East this year. Six and zero in the NFC East. Not none of them bum ass teams beat us. Fuck your talk. Done. Be finished. For now, until we beat the 49ers <laughs> next week. Okay, on our way to the All Super Bowl, right. baby. All right. So what does it mean? What does that mean? Your Cowboys ain't gonna do nothing anyway. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't never All you do nothing. Cowboys, it's me, Super Bowl. In Trevin Diggs, we trust. In mm-hmm. Dak Prescott, we trust. Dropping the clues bombs for my Dallas Cowboys. We did lose our Are quarterback you there, Cowboys? from a concussion. It's and also me, Super Bowl. The Saquon new book Barkley had to go by out because of the God ankle. and Judy Bloom coming out on Black Privilege Publishing. Are you there, God? Are you there, Cowboys? It's me, Super Bowl. Shut up. So, so what happened over the weekend? I missed the game. <laughs> What's the problem? Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear any slander from any, from any Giants fan. Okay, if your if your team is in the playoffs still, you can slander the Dallas Cowboys all day. But if you're a New York Giants fan, shut up. Shut yeah, the just, f up forever. Saying, you were just saying you were gonna be at the, at the Super Bowl. I, I, listen, and you that, was about to book your flight and get your hotels and all that. Listen, there's always next year. There's always next year. <laughs> okay, I didn't. I'm 43 years old. Diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. My daddy's a Dallas Cowboy fan. Salute the Cowboy in Kiffield, South Carolina. Nothing gonna change with me. I'm a ride or die with mine. Okay, and I just been dying the last 27 years, but it's okay. You have been dying. All right, we got to get rid of Mike McCarthy. Bring in Eric Benemy. Hire Eric Benemy, the offensive coordinator for the All Kansas right. City Chiefs. Get rid of Mike McCarthy. All right, a qu- quick question before we get into this, right? Yes. Michael Todd says. Hey, yes. I'll spit on you yes. and your Cowboys make it to the Super Bowl. I don't know about Michael Todd, but I'll let Jesus do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus can spit in my eye for a Super Bowl victory for the Dallas Cowboys. I Jesus can. I, I don't know about Pastor Michael Todd, but I would let Jesus do it, okay? What? Mark 823. I am the blind man who Goodness could not see that my Cowboys suck. Spit in my eye, please. Goodness I want to see us win a Super Bowl. Please, Jesus. What else we got here? Next year. All right, Dr. Fauci is saying it's still too soon to say whether this Omicron COVID variant is the final wave of the pandemic. It is highly transmissible, but it's less severe than other variants. So they're hoping this can bring things down to the level of a seasonal flu. And they're saying it's an open question right now. But for people who are trying to have these COVID parties, don't do that. Uh, They said it's nothing like, remember when you grew up, people wanted you to get the chicken pox and get it over with. So they would have chicken pox parties. Mm -hmm. What they're saying the problem with COVID is natural immunity doesn't amount to much. So doctors are saying you should still get the shots and the booster. But uh, hopefully this will be the final wave. Although, again, with everything else going on, we don't know. All right, and Netflix has raised prices in the U.S. and Canada, so... Because of inflation or just because they decided to do it? I mean, they just decided to raise those plans. So stock actually went up after that happened, after trading on Friday. It went up uh, as much as 3%. And so the monthly cost for the basic plan rose to $9.99. That's $1 more. Mm -hmm. The standard plan uh, jumped from $13.99 to $15.49. And the premium plan rose from seventeen ninety nine to nineteen ninety nine. I'm making some decisions soon. I got too many cable subscriptions. All right, some of these streaming channels gotta go. Netflix won't be one of them. No, it won't. But, but <laughs> All right, so there's Disney Plus. Oh, I'm definitely not getting rid of Disney Plus. I know for a fact Netflix and Disney Plus is staying. All right, Amazon Prime. They on the chopping block, maybe. Apple TV. No, they stay. gotta keep that. Hulu. Gone. May- yeah, they on the chopping block. <laughs> All right, yeah, but there are a lot of different... HBO Max it. is kind of on the HBO. chopping block, too. But don't you have that if you have HBO anyway? Yes. So that's why I already have it. I got to I gotta catch that. There's a, Pakistan, a Pakistani person there, so I've been watching my Netflix recently. And I don't know how you got my passcode, but... I didn't know they're Pakistani. Because it shows where they're watching it. It shows where you're at, yeah. Oh, wow. But I'm a, Just change your passcode. I did, man. I did, like, twice, and, and he got back in again, so I'm trying to figure out who. That might be you. That might be your other you. It's a multiverse out here. That might be somebody in the metaverse. All right. Or well, Casey in the metaverse watching your um maybe whatever. What do you say, Netflix? Mm-hmm. That is your front page news. All right, all right. Now when we come back, let's talk spitting in the eye. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Now Pastor Michael Todd over the weekend, oh, he spit in his brother's eye. He didn't to, spit in his eye. Did he? I didn't see no, the video. No, he spit on his hand and then he rubbed it on his face. Rubbed it on his face. Well, I'll okay. show you how. I'll show you. Come here. No. Okay. Jesus spit in the blind man's eye. Right. Mark 8, 23. He spit in the blind man's eye and then asked him if he could see. That's the crazy part. We don't even know if the blind man really could see because he asked him after he spit in his eye, can you see now? <laughs> 
I'm not a pastor. Don't listen to me. My okay, goodness. I'm just reading the scripture. 800 585 1051. What are your thoughts? Michael Todd, of course, he's a pastor. He's I got a thoughts. best selling author. Uh, he spit in his hand and wiped it on his brother's face because so his brother could grow some hair. My, it, it didn't grow any hair. I got thoughts. Mine is simple. It's just a lot of things in the Bible I don't know if we're supposed to take literally. Literally. And there's a lot of things that folks did in the Bible that would get you canceled now. So it just, it just you know, it makes you wonder, would these people have outrage watching Jesus spit in that blind man's eye? But Jesus is Jesus. We, we Are we mimicking Jesus now? That's clearly, that's what the Bible says to do. God created man in his own image according to his likeness. We walk around with t-shirts that say, what would Jesus do? And bracelets that say, what would Jesus do? I think that's what Pastor Todd was doing in that What's moment. What's next? What's next? We're going to walk over water? Go walk over ocean? You can try. Track? David Blaine does it all the time. He gets it done. I can't do it. <laughs> okay. right. And I, was, I see the outrage on Pastor Todd, but it's rooted in scripture. So are we ready to admit that it might be a lot of things in the Bible that are simply outdated? And if you're going to cancel people, okay, for, for things that they do from the Bible, are you ready to cancel the Bible? It's just a discussion. I'm not, I'm not here for any judgment or any opinion. I'm just asking questions. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Michael Todd. Of course, he's a pastor. He's a best-selling author. And over the weekend, uh, he was trending. Everybody was talking about him because of this right here. (coughs) When getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty. Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. What, What I'm telling you is how you just reacted is how the people in your life will react. When God is doing what it takes for the miracle, what are you saying? This man was blind, and what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. Yes, he actually spit into his hand, like two he spit, mm-hmm. and then wiped it on his brother's uh, face. He gave an apology, though, right? He did give an apology. Let's, let's listen to that, because he explained it a little bit more. It was disgusting. <laughs> like, that was gross. That was a distraction to what I was really trying to do. When Jesus uh, spit on... That man, he was blind and then he could see. Um, For my brother who I love and uh, honor so much, I just called him. He was bald before I spit on him and he's still bald today. Now, I didn't even watch this video this weekend because I don't know why I would ever want to watch a video of a man spitting on another man. Okay, but when I saw that it was Pastor Michael Todd and I saw that spit was involved, immediately I thought about, you know, uh, when Jesus took the blind man and spit in his eye and asked him if he could see, Mark 8, 23. Because I've seen pastors give sermons, you know, on that before. I've seen Bishop T.D. Jakes give a sermon on, on that same scripture scripture before. So so what are people actually outraged about in this situation? Just that it was disgusting and because it's COVID? I because uh, Michael Todd's not Jesus. Like, you don't have the same powers as Jesus. You know so I mean? why do we walk around with bracelets and T-shirts that say, what would Jesus do? Nah, yeah, but not what, what would Mike Todd do. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Duh. What would Jesus do? If right. I'm Mike Todd, I'm asking myself, what would Jesus do but in that Jesus. moment? So why do they give us bracelets that say, what would Jesus do? Here, here's the thing. It's a lot of, like I, I've been saying all morning, it's a lot of things in the Bible uh, that I just don't think we're supposed to take literally. And it's a lot of things that folks did in the Bible that will get you canceled down. Correct. So it makes you wonder, should I care what people think or should I stick to what scripture sh- says? Should I care what people think or should I move how these folks moved in the Bible? Would these people have outrage watching Jesus spit in that blind man's eye? I'm asking. Not Jesus, no. So but... if it was Jesus, it wouldn't be, it still would be disgusting if it was Jesus. No, it wouldn't. You crazy. The Bishop T.D. Jake sermon that he did where he talked about, um, uh, it's called Lord Spit On Me or something like that. He talked about how disgusting it would be. If Je- <laughs> well, that, well, that's him. But if Jesus, you a human. If you saw Jesus spit on somebody, you'd be like, Jesus. God damn. If Jesus spit on me and said whatever. I, Jesus could spit on me. It ain't. The, here's the thing. If if I spit on you, if you not, blind, not you. If Jesus spit on Stevie Wonder, correct. And if Stevie Wonder was like, Oh my God, I can see. You'd forget about the spit, correct? Because <laughs> you'd be like, Damn, he just made this man see. Absolutely. But if he spit on him and he couldn't see. Then it's a different like, story. man, Jesus, you nasty. <laughs> well, yeah, he did say it was a distraction from the message that he was trying to convey. And clearly no miracle happened. His brother's mm-hmm. still bald, he said. So. And listen, I see the outrage directed towards Pastor Todd. I can understand it because it is nasty. But also, I'm just confused. he's a pastor and what he did is rooted in scripture. So are we ready to admit that it might be a lot of things in the Bible that are simply outdated? Because if you're going to cancel 
you know, uh, people for things they're doing from the Bible, are you ready to cancel the Bible? Yeah, but, but, but the you, Bible was written by man. That's and true. And there's the Old Testament and the New Testament. In and the LeBron James version. Interpretations. Wow. So we can't assume that everything in there is. Listen, Dr. Seuss books were written by man. Mm -hmm. And six Dr. Seuss books were taken off the shelf because of racially insensitive content. So should the Bible? The Bible has discrimination against women. There's intolerance of homosexuality. The Bible was used to justify the horrors of slavery. There's not one scripture in the Bible named after a woman. Okay, all I'm saying is there's a lot of outdated concepts in the Bible. So if you're ready to cancel people for things they do from the Bible, are you ready to cancel the Bible? So we need a newer testament. I, well, I don't, don't like that. You got, listen, we got the LeBron James version. We need the Steph Curry version. Okay, did we? What? Oh, are you, are you doing the cutoff to be like, no, I'm, I'm like, what am I saying <laughs> wrong? God was behind you for a second. Uh, listen, I'm, listen, I'm not making no excuses for Michael Todd. I'm just simply saying I know what he did was rooted in Scripture. He's literally he's he's literally taking what was said in the Bible literal. Jesus spit in the blind man's eye. All right. That's well, all I'm saying. So it's just like, yo, listen. But you're not Jesus. Neither nobody is. Okay, so you should be So stop asking we need to stop asking what would Jesus do then? Stop trying to be Christ like. Stop trying to move in the image of God then. That's what you're saying. No, I'm just saying you, you can't. No, you no, can't no, 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 no. That's you, what you're saying. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to walk in that direction, but you're not him. What direction? You got superpowers is Jesus. Where are we supposed to walk? You know? To the to the east, my brother. brother to, to the, the east. east. <laughs> to the west, my Hello, who's this? DJ. DJ, what up? What's going on? Is it DJ or BJ? DJ. Like DJ. Okay, I got you, DJ. All right, so what are your thoughts, brother? Uh, I just want, I grew up in Pentecostal church my whole life. I never seen Bishop have to do anything like this. Um, I think he should have, like, used water to represent the spit. Like, they, he uses, um, like, in church, they use uh, the wine for his blood and crackers for the... Uh, That's true. That's true. Body. That's true. So, I think you should like water to like represent that because he went too far with that. But would it still have the same impact? No, absolutely not. What if he did it like your mama used to do it? Just lick, lick your thumb and then wipe your eye That's like you wiping the cola out your eye. It's COVID out there too. <laughs> and, so our mamas were nasty? That's our mama <laughs> though, man. They were. Yup, they sure were. God damn, our mamas were nasty. You think mama's still doing that during COVID, man? Yeah, I'll do that to my kids. Don't do that to your kids. <laughs> <laughs> You can't do that if you're vaccinated. The CDC said that. The <laughs> CDC up, said that if you're vaccinated, you, you cannot wipe coal out your kids' eyes. 800-585-1051. We're talking past the Michael Todd. You seen him over the week and he spit in his hand and wiped it on his brother's head because he was trying to get him to grow hair. It didn't work. He did not say that. <laughs> he ain't say that. See? See how you manipulating the story? This is exactly what people do to the Bible. They manipulate the Bible. That man ain't say nothing about nobody being bald. He did. And he's spitting on the people's head. He did head. say something about no, being he bald. Didn't. Yes, Stop he did. It. He said his brother's still bald. There yeah, was no miracle. Still he was making a joke. He didn't do that for that reason. Because you could tell. You laughed. I didn't lie. I didn't hear no joke. 800 585 1051. Let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. I know it now. I like it. 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 I like Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800 585 1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about Pastor Michael Todd over the weekend. Uh, well, this is what happened. Let's hear it. <coughs> God's saying, can you physically and spiritually and emotionally be able to stand when getting the vision or receiving it might get nasty? Yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. What, what I'm telling you is how you just reacted is how the people in your life will react when God is doing what it takes for the miracle. What are you saying? This man was blind and what he was trying to do with this man is give him his DNA. Yep, he spit on his brother's uh <laughs> He spit on his hand and he wiped it on his brother's face and then he apologized. Yeah, he's taking Mark 8, 23, too literal when Jesus took the blind man and spit in his eye and asked him if he could see. So we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts, all right? Hello, who's this? This is Mike from Harlem. Mike from Harlem. Yes, sir. All right, Mike, what you think, bro? Well, I feel that the Bible is a book of allegories. The stories and narratives created by men back in those days, and they were, the Bible was meant to control and to direct people. So at the end of the day, um, there are so many different... The Bible relates to everything, anything that you can possibly go through in life there's a story there that you can that you can relate to to help you get through that situation but i don't think you need to take it literally because at any day you don't know if the story is or not 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, King James used 47 scholars to put the Bible together. There are some books that are in there, some that are not, which in case you have different religions, Muslims, Christians, um, uh, uh, monks, it's all about what you believe. But it's not made to be taken literally. Okay. Unless you have the same... Okay. Uh, it's for you to interpret yeah, it and, inspi- and be inspired the way that you choose. That's dangerous. Why is that dangerous? That's dangerous to just give somebody some text and tell them interpret how you want to interpret it. No, that's dangerous. Look how social media is now and the way people interpret things all the time and misinterpret things all the time. That's dangerous. Hello, who's this? You need somebody to guide you. Yeah, this is JB. JB, what From up, man? What'd What's you think, up, man? What'd you think about that pastor up. spitting in his hand and then wiping it on? Uh, pastor Michael Todd. Brother's face, Michael Todd. Man, I'm with Shalom, man. Some things just outdated, man, because... You spit on me nowadays, man. I'm going to lay hands on you in the most unholy way. <laughs> Imagine a man walking up to you and spitting on you and just saying, I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. Yeah, yeah it's going to go complete. He's going to go see Jesus for sure. <laughs> Goodbye, man. <laughs> Hello, who's this? I love you, Jesus. Yo, what's up? This is Glenn. Glenn, are you a pastor, brother? Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a pastor, but I've been to many churches, my brother. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing, brother? How you doing, up, King? Bro? Good morning. How are you? Has anybody ever spit in their hand and wiped it on your face, bro? <laughs> What the, <laughs> yeah, that, that that's that's crazy to me, man. It's, it's like it's, it's like people are just blindly following these pastors. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's that, that's my main reason why people send their children to these Catholic priests. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not getting their un- own understanding of the scripture themselves. You know, in Matthew five twenty nine, it says that you know if you if your left if your right eye offends thee, pluck it out. Cast it from these. So what you gonna do? Stop poking your own eye out? Well, listen. It depends on how much of a religious fanatic you are. Because Mark eight twenty three says when Jesus took the blind man and spit in his eye, you know, and then asked him if he could see. So I look at Pastor Michael Todd. He took that scripture literally. So was Jesus wrong for spitting in that blind man's eye back in the day? I mean, that's Jesus, but it, it don't matter. Saying, Jesus, man, Frank Michael Todd ain't Jesus. It don't matter. You know what I'm it, by, by the way, by, a, a sickness on your face. By the way, y'all only saying this because Jesus made the blind man see. If Jesus ain't made that blind man see, y'all wouldn't y'all wouldn't be you know Jesus. giving it up for him like this. Wait, yo, 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 show me before y'all cut me off. Can I say something about your podcast, man, The Black Effect? Okay, Which bro. one? That's a network. A million dollars worth of game because that's like the most important one for the black youth out there. They not on Black Effect. They're my guys. Those salute the Wallow and Gilly. Wallow and Gilly on Boston. Oh, Boston, my bad. But yo, with a million dollars worth of game because if, if the kids out there don't listen to Wally stories with, with, from the cell, then they crazy. And, and that's if right. They don't go to jail. They just want some sandwiches. That's right. And Wallow, what? no, for real. I mean, Wallow, Wallow did, I love Wallow, man. That brother did 20 years and, you know, came home and made the most of his life. And he not making, you know, no excuses. He's just out here living his best life. Salute to Wallow and Gilly. All right. Well, what's the moral of the story? Uh, the moral of the story is I, I, I keep asking y'all this. I really want y'all to think about this. It's a lot of things in the Bible that y'all cancel people for. But are you ready to cancel the Bible? I'm just saying. Because it's a lot of outdated concepts in the Bible. If, if six Dr. Seuss books have been taken off the shelf due to racially insensitive content, what about the Bible? The Bible's got discrimination against women. There's intolerance to homosexuality. The Bible was used to justify the horrors of slavery. There's not one scripture in the Bible named after a woman. People spitting on people in the Bible. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's a lot of outdated concepts in the Bible. So if you're ready to cancel people for things they do from the Bible, are you ready to cancel the Bible? I don't have an opinion. I'm just asking a question. That's all. All right. Well, we got rumors on the way. I love God. Yes, somehow Kanye West stays in the news more than anybody else. So we'll talk to you about a new song that he released and other issues that he had over the weekend and another exclusive interview that he's done explaining why he bought a house across the street from his family. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. My, my business, hey. My, my business, hey. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's a Tuesday. It is a Tuesday. Yeah, I want to shout out to the uh, the New York Knicks uh, and that whole organization over there. Uh, I went to the game uh, yesterday. Took my son, bonding time, father-dad time. Uh, father-dad, father-son time. And <laughs> had a great time. We went to the game, even though the, uh, the Knicks lost. Still, was it was a, it was a wonderful time, man. Just spending time with my son and just talking-ish, watching the players and... Just really having a, a great time. I seen Pat Poos at the game. I seen Leon, you know, actor Leon. Mm-hmm. He's also a musician. Musician as well, yeah. Of course, I seen. I seen uh, uh, Spike Lee was there, of course. Okay. But yeah, I had a good time. Just you know, just hanging out with my son, man. That's 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 the best time. Just spending some quality time talking to him and 
It was a great time. So shout out to the, the New York Knicks and, and that whole organization over there. Thank y'all. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to watch certain shows that like I keep hearing people talk about. I've got to figure out. Like I what? haven't seen Porsche's show yet. I so I, I, I want to see it. what it's that's over. like. Cause I, yeah, I saw that. Uh, has anybody seen it here? Porsche's? I no, I haven't watched Porsche's show. I saw the clips. I'm watching Euphoria. I'm on, oh my gosh, Euphoria is... I watched the first two episodes of this second season. A lot of penises. I told you that. A lot of penises. <laughs> That's why you like it so much. So you saw the up. first episode. Did you see the second episode I saw, yet? Yeah, I watched the second one last night. Okay. <laughs> so you know he going to see it. He told you what it was about. I like you for it. I think you for it is a great show. I'm mm-hmm. sure. I think it's phenomenal. Yes, it sure. is. I got to see a listed uh, Atlanta, those ladies. Uh, the second episode was this uh, this Friday, so I got to check that out too. All right. All right. Well, we got rumors on the way. What are we talking about? Yay. He got a new song with the game. It's called Easy. We'll tell you some of that. Also, we'll talk about his interview with Jason Lee for Unlocked. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Spilling the tea. This is the rumor report with Angela Yee on the Breakfast Club. Well, Kanye West has definitely been keeping busy. He had a lot going on over the weekend. Now, one thing that he did was a sit-down interview with Jason Lee, and he discussed the alleged punch where they said he punched a fan. So, as far as the paparazzi go, right? It wasn't a fan, you know. So last the, night, last night, so it's three a.m. in front of the warehouse. I'm saying you don't know what. I'm dealing with right now. I just finished these two songs. I came from the studio. I created the record with this impromptu shoot, and my cousins went and didn't really, you know, deliver the mission. And this dude just—he just had this like real attitude, like what you gonna do and this and that. I'm gonna just tell you that blue COVID mask didn't stop that knockout. Was it the taunting? <laughs> was it the taunting? The disrespect? The disregard for your privacy? Was mm-hmm. what was it? Mm-hmm. It's all that, but that's that's what Hollywood be. I don't think that was smart talking about that, honestly. Yeah, salute to Jason Lee, but that's why you got to have security because security can protect you from situations like that because that is definitely going to cost Kanye West. I mean, he got it, though. He got it. <laughs> All right, well, the man he allegedly punched was 40-year-old Justin Paplowski. He's notorious for getting autographs from celebrities for the last 25 years, according to the U.S. Sun. So they said he's an autograph collector. If if I was Justin, what's his name? Justin what? Pa- Justin Paplowski. If, if I was him, mm-hmm. if I was him, after I heard that Hollywood Unlocked interview, I would have went back to the scene mm-hmm. where I got punched and laid back on the ground. <laughs> you still be there right now? <laughs> I'd have been laying right you back still be there right on now? the ground, right there, right now. Yeah, okay? Yeah, me too. That's another few zeros just got added to whatever Absolute, you was going to Absolutely, because he just admitted it. Yes. Now, Kanye also talked about buying the house across the street from Kim Kardashian and his children. My solace comes from seeing my kids and getting a solid schedule. That's why I even got the house. You know, they flipped it in the, you know, the media, like there was something wrong with me getting a house next to my kid. You see when my mom took my, me from Atlanta uh, to Chicago, my dad didn't come to the coldest and, you know, most dangerous city in the world to be next to me. He said, I wanted to stay down in Atlanta, you know, because of my career. Mm-hmm. It's nothing with my career, with this rap, with this media, with none of that. That's gonna keep me from my children, and that's what I want everybody to know. When he talks that way as a father, I understand completely. I like, think that's P. That's P, that's right? P? I'm yeah, using yeah, that correctly. Yeah, and by P, I mean paid. And you gotta have a certain amount of that's money paid. to do things like that. I'm not yeah, mad at that. But I'm not. Yeah, I'm not mad at that either. Now, Kanye also said that he was blocked by security from entering Kim Kardashian's house while trying to visit their four, ch- four children. But she says, uh, according to TMZ. They're saying that she never denied him access to the children and she goes above and beyond to make sure he gets to see them. She just didn't give him the address to the party. Well, the party was, I thought it was at the house, no? No, I think it was at Kylie's house. I said, oh, yeah, he, it was at Kylie's he house, didn't have yes. The address. He and it was um, Travis Scott actually invited him because he was online saying that he wasn't invited to uh, Chicago's fourth birthday party. But fortunately for him, Travis Scott told him the party was at Kylie's home <laughs> and sent him the information. And Kylie did let him in. So. So Travis basically like, this house the party is at my P the P is at my P the right. party's at my place you know get it P P I, 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 I get it no, now Kanye you also put out this song with the game it's called Easy and uh, here's some of the things that he addressed he addressed his day. and then he had some things to say about Pete Davidson God sent me from that crash just so I could beat Pete Davidson's ass <laughs> corny what happened to Jesus Kanye <laughs> Like, you don't curse in records, but you talk about beating people up? That was last album. Oh. <laughs> Listen, remember when um, Kanye was on Drink Champs and he talked about how he never really liked backpack rap? 
Yes. He was just using the backpack backpackers, yeah. and he doesn't really like them like that. Mm -hmm. Trust and believe. That's how he feels about all these street rappers he's putting himself next to. Kanye don't like none of y'all. Okay, Kanye standing next to Jay Prince in the game and Beanie Siegel. He did all that just to say that line about Pete. That's all it. Right. Man, he worked with the game before. Him and the game, it seemed like they got a good relationship. Man, he ain't, listen, I saw him in a picture and game was holding a gun. I'm like, Kanye, is, mm -hmm. is, he, he, yeah, Kanye got like this because he's literally just using those street rappers to try to scare Pete away from Kim or scare Kim away from Pete. But what he's going to realize is wolves don't make good house pets. Mm. Okay. No. All right. right. Well, in addition, Kanye's no. Gap and Balenciaga deal is estimated to bring in close to a billion dollars in sales by next year. That's so. amazing. No. Dropping the clues bonds for Kanye what? for that. No, no, but what you said is serious, and, that, and that's that's a good lesson for a lot of people Wolves don't make good house pets. Wolves do not make that's good right. house pets. You might use backpackers. You might use, you know, Jesus. You ain't going to use them I'm wolves. I'm going to write that one down. I like that <laughs> Wolves, <laughs> wolves pen, don't man. make good house pets. Kanye, you're going to learn that, that the hard is way. Is that original or is that Leonard? That's Leonard McKay. I'm using that I one. I am a New York Times bestseller in Austin. Okay. Wolves don't make good Wolves don't make good house pets. I like pets. that one. All right, well, that is your rumor report. You'll right. learn that the hard way. I like that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, who are you giving your donkey to? Uh, four after the hour, donkey today needs to go to Scott Henry. Okay, Scott Henry is a... Who that is? He's a board member of a Cy of the Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District. We'll talk about it for after the hour. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Let's go. It's time to wake up. Yeah. It's The Breakfast Club. It's going, going down. Angela Yee here. And my friends at The General Insurance give you quality car insurance for less. Check out their affordable rates and flexible payment options by calling 800-GENERAL or visiting thegeneral.com. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc., an insurance agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. This don't be a donkey, because right now you want some real donkey It's time for donkey of the day. So if you ever feel I need to be a donkey, man, <laughs> hit me with the heat. Did she get donkey in the day? Please tell me. Absolutely. I have become donkey of the day. It's the breakfast club, bitches. You're a donkey. Yeah, it's donkey of the day for Tuesday, January 18th. Goes to Scott Henry. Do you all know who Scott Henry is? Scott Henry is a man who is a board member on the Cypress Fairbanks Independent School District. And he thinks that the more black teachers the district has, the greater the dropout rate. I said, Scott Henry believes the more black teachers the district has, the greater the dropout rate. He made these comments last Monday night during a work session about uh, Cy Fair's ISD equity audit report. Uh, I have no idea what that is, but I do know his comments are he hall worthy. Let's go to, what's the, what's, hey, Eddie, what's the news report? Okay. Uh, well, we have one, let's go. We want to commend that company for taking that stand. Praise tonight from the Houston chapter of the NAACP for the California software company who parted ways with SciFair ISD Board of Education trustee Scott Henry. Henry accused of racism after making these offensive comments about black educators. Houston ISD, which I'll use as a shine example, you know, what the, you know what their average number of percentage of black teachers is? 36%. I looked that up. You know what their dropout rate is? 4%. I don't want to be 4%. I don't want to be HISD. Two days ago, Splunk, Henry's employer, tweeted that diversity, equity, and inclusion are core to Splunk's values and mission. We are deeply committed to DEI and take these concerns seriously. Tonight, they took a stand, tweeting, we view the employee's conduct as inconsistent with who we are as Splunkers, and the individual is no longer employed by our company. Splunk confirms the tweet. Henry has not responded to a request for comment. Yes, that news report was courtesy of ABC 13. I like to give credit. Now, what's interesting about this is Scott Henry posted on his Facebook page that he was defending his school district against attacks from an out-of-state political organization that claimed their schools were failing our students because they didn't meet one predetermined diversity metric. Okay, this is Scott Henry talking. He said this political organization claimed that one metric, the percent of black teachers in our schools, determined the quality of education. The students receive and he was simply refuting that by pointing out the fact there is no one metric that determines education quality uh there are a number of important metrics that should also be taken into account end quote okay listen scott henry if one predetermined diversity metric doesn't determine the quality of education then why did you bring up one uh predetermined diversity metric which is the number of black teachers and use that to determine this is why there is a dropout rate I understand all humans are walking contradictions, but does anyone uh, attempt to have any consistency anymore? 
I'm all about information. I'll take information over opinion any day, but he didn't give any real information to back up his claim. If you're going to make a claim like that, you have to be able to say these districts with black teachers have a significantly higher dropout rate than other districts. But 4%. What is that in comparison to everywhere else? That sounds very low to me. Okay, I read something that says the overall status high school dropout rate in all of America is 5.1%. Can someone confirm or deny? Okay, I don't know if that's true. Okay, I just looked that up. Uh, that district Scott Henry is complaining about seems lower than the national average. The moral of the story is diversity isn't hurting kids. Divisiveness and racism are. Now, I would think this kind of blatant racism would be cause for, you know, uh, immediate dismissal, because how can this guy make rationale decisions about what needs to be done with our kids if they are through a lens of racism? OK, Scott Henry, riddle me this. If more black teachers leads to worse student outcomes, then what does racially divisive board members lead to? Hmm? I ask again, Scott Henry, if more black teachers leads to worse student outcomes, then what does racially divisive board members lead to? Please let Chelsea Handler give Scott Henry the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw. That is way too much Dan Mayonnaise. Kathy Griffin, you want to get in on this? Please give this giant jar of mayo the biggest hee-haw. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if Chris Rock got something to say. You don't think Chris Rock got nothing to say? Of course. Cracker ass cracker. <gasps> <gasps> All right. Am I being racially divisive by playing that? All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. All I don't right. Like my Palo Santo. Let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. So over the weekend, uh, Kanye was daughter uh, Chicago was having her birthday party, and allegedly Kanye wasn't invited. All right. He was trying to get the address. He didn't know where the party was being held. Nobody would hit him back. Nobody would give him the address. Address. <laughs> he reached out to Tristan Thompson, uh, and Tristan didn't give him the address. But finally, Travis Scott allegedly did. Yo, I'm so happy right now. I just came from Shy's party and I just got to shout out to Travis Scott for sending me the address and the time and making sure that I was able to spend the spend that birthday memory with my daughter to be there with the rest of the family and I just saw everybody. It was uh, you know, Chris and Corey and Kylie. Kylie let me in right when I got to the spot cuz the security, you know, stopped me once again when I got there and you know it's just a matter of just having a conversation open dialogue and it was just everyone just had a great time so we're asking 800-585-1051 you in that situation do you give Kanye the address if you Travis Scott because you know allegedly Kim didn't the family didn't he asked Tristan Tristan allegedly said no uh, Tristan was like look I'm in trouble I ain't giving nothing I ain't even involved but what would you do would you give that address if you're Travis Scott if I was Travis Scott, who, in the court of public opinion, is being accused of inciting riots, I don't think I would, because that could definitely have caused uh, some commotion. Correct. At that party. Now I would have, I would have, saw, I would have saw if, uh, I would have asked the rest of the family. If yeah. the rest of the family say cool, but if he's hitting the rest of the family and nobody's sending it to him, obviously they did, wasn't giving him the address. But then Travis, I mean, I'm sure he knows. It's my like, house. At, at the end of the day, yeah, it's my, it's house. my house. Well, I think it was his house. I mean, oh, I think it was Kylie's house. Kylie's house. Kylie's house. Well, but you know, it's to the point. But he still. Chicago's dad. I'm sure he didn't make that decision without the rest of the family, bro. But what I, would you do? I, I'm sure that we're only getting the social media information, meaning that we're only getting bits and pieces. We're just getting whatever We're Kanye only getting said. one side, which is Kanye's side. I'm sure the rest of the family co-signed nobody on him else, coming to the party. Nobody else replied? Man, it's just... And how do we know Travis is the only person that sent the address? Where do we get this stuff from? That, Kanye said it. He yeah, just Kanye said it. Said it. Oh, what a reliable he source. <laughs> he is that, the source. That is a I would feel the way, though. Right, I'm like, right, yo, bro, right. I tried to give you the address on the low, and then you just blew me all up. I <laughs> highly doubt that Travis Scott is the only person who sent Kanye what's that address. 800-585-1051. If you were Travis Scott, would you send the address? It's I mean, not. I, I highly doubt. Why are we doing this to Travis? I highly just, doubt it was just question. Travis. Just, based off what Kanye said. Kanye said nobody sent the address. Off of. That's what Jay yeah, said. He said nobody sent me the address. He said I asked Tristan... Tristan didn't respond. What about Chris? You don't think Chris sent it? No, he, he said he, he didn't. You don't think Chris, he was standing next to Chris the whole time at the party? Well, that's when he got there. How you know Kim ain't sent it? He said he did. He said he got it from Travis. Oh, God. All right, man. I'll, I'll, I'll play along. All right, well, listen. Here, let's play that part. Right. Happy birthday. I wasn't allowed to know where her party was. There's nothing legal. They're saying that these are the kind of games that's being played. At the light. It's the kind of thing that right really Boulevard. has affected my health for the longest 
Uh, and I'm just not playing. I'm not letting, I'm taking control of my narrative this year. I'm being the father, the best father, the yay version of a father. And I'm, I'm not finna let this happen. And we're gonna be in real time take a slight with this. He didn't get invited, bro. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about it. It's not funny, man. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We're just asking 800-585-1051. So over the weekend, uh, Kanye was uh, talking on his Instagram, talking about he wasn't invited to his daughter's party, and he said nobody would give him an invitation, wouldn't give him the address or anything. Let's hear. Yeah, I'm just wishing my daughter a public right. happy birthday. I wasn't allowed to know where her party was. I'm just putting this online because I need y'all support. I didn't call Kim texting nannies i got on the phone with tristan he he said he asked chloe won't nobody give me the address to my daughter's birthday party right now and that's going to imprint in her mind that i wasn't there for her but finally he said uh, he spoke to travis and travis gave him uh the address and he was able to go and he was very appreciative yo i'm so happy right now i just came from shy's party and i just got a shout out to travis scott for sending me the address and the time and making sure that I was able to spend the spend that birthday memory with my daughter to be there with the rest of the family. So we're asking 800-585-1051. If you were Travis Scott, would you give him the address? Let's start with you, Yee. What would you do? I would mind my business because that's between the <laughs> two of them. And if nobody else is doing it, I'm minding my business. That's not my child. That's not my house. So it's not really but, up to me. You know, Travis might be looking at it like, you know, he knows that that man's Chicago's dad and he knows that he should be there and was like, you know, that's a decision. What, for, what is he going to do? They, for, they got security at the house. here. That's a nothing. decision for I feel like him to make, you know, and it's also Kylie's home. So I'm not making decisions for people. That's on them. That's not on me. Charlamagne. Uh, well, first of all, let the record show. I'm just playing along for radio purposes because I don't believe Travis Scott would just invite someone that the rest of the family doesn't want there. And I also don't believe the rest of the family, you know, didn't want Kanye there. But if that's Kanye's story, uh, if I was Travis, I would probably mind my business too, like he said, uh, because these folks already think I incite riots. So I'm not bringing you over here to hack up. So, all right, so let me ask you, you speak to Travis, let's say Ye and Travis speak all the time, right? Now you call me, you just don't answer? What do you say? That's right. <laughs> you'll be looking. You'll be looking at the text messages, and it'll say this phone is on. You'll be get this phone has been silenced. What's the mess? What's the, the notification? Silence silence the silence, silence notification. You know what I mean? I'm not doing that. And by the way, if I, if I already saw you on, not, that's the crazy part. If I already saw you on Instagram mm -hmm. saying you need to come over, blah blah blah, this and that, I'd be like, God dang, I'm definitely not answering my phone. How, but how, Tristan didn't Tristan didn't respond. Tristan was like, Nah, I got too much problems. I can see though. I mean, I can see. And by the way, I'm not judging either one of them because I could see why Travis would invite him. That's his daughter. And Travis is a father. You know what I'm saying? And Travis probably put himself in Kanye's shoes. You know what I mean? It's Travis probably also assessed the situation. You know what I mean? It was like, well, you know, it's not like Kim's boyfriend or somebody is here. You know what I mean? Correct. So why not? It just seems odd. Like It just seems wild when, they, when, when Kanye was like, yeah, when I got there, security was there and wouldn't let me in at first. It's, that's yay. Well, yay, you look dangerous nowadays. <laughs> you look Do you dangerous. see the company you've been keeping? Oh, my God. <laughs> Hello, who's this? What's up? This is Charles from Georgia City. Charles, what up, bro? What, what's your thoughts, man? Man, my thoughts is Travis did the right thing, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with what he did. At the end of the day, Kanye West, he's trying to be a father to his kids. And I ain't trying to say Kim K is mad or whatever, but... At the end of the day, you broke up with him, and now you hold him back from his kids, and he trying to be in his kids' life. That well, ain't right. I'm talking about. I'm just saying, how do we come to all of these conclusions? Yeah, I don't that think Kim's that Kim's holding him back from the kids. Where's all this coming from? He's with his kids. I don't know that she doesn't allow him to see his kids at all. Maybe she just didn't that's want. His birthday. Though. I mean, that's her birthday. At the end of the day, if he don't have the address, that has to be some type of like, like if he. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, pretty sure he communicated to her like, where's the birthday party at, or whatever, and there's not got no response. I don't they know what your temperature is. You just put out a record saying how you gonna beat my boyfriend's <laughs> ass, and you know all of it. My kids are spoiled. The kid, I don't know what Charlie your temperature Charlie is. Charlie Charlie is. Charlie Let me ask you this: you, you big on mental health, right? Yes. So why, whenever Kanye West has a negative like out, outbreak or whatever, it's like 
you throw it out there as in like he on some boat on some BS instead of like well I ain't gonna say you don't help him but it's like I feel as though like instead of just throwing it out there like oh he wilding out da 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 we should have consideration for what he's going through mentally. You know I could be I could be yeah, wrong. I I could be wrong, but I thought I heard Kanye saying that same verse. You know, don't call him crazy. He's not going to see his therapist, whatever, whatever. He doesn't negotiate he with He doesn't therapists. negotiate with therapists. So listen, we can talk about mental health all day, but if people aren't willing to go get that help, and more, even more so, they're making a mockery of therapy and making a mockery of people who go out there and get help and say, you don't negotiate with therapists, how much remorse can I have? Hello, who's and this? I, and I just want to say one more thing. He mm -hmm. did have his own birthday party also for her, for for their daughter too. And he, they said he was always having a party as well. Hello, who's this? Yeah, Bernie, man. Bernie Bur from Duval. Bernie from Duval. I just left Duval. Y'all already all back. What's up, Bubba? What's your thoughts? Man, see, that's a prime example why you don't tell people so. How you gonna tell on me after I give you a little piece right. of Right. <laughs> you were supposed to be low about it. Just pop up. Yeah. And he went right on live. <laughs> me not being able to see my kid and be able to make my birthday memory. What's going on? Now the family mad at me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, I can't go to the birthday parties now. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie, man. That's what I said. If yeah. I tell you some information, just keep it low. Keep it low, man. Lord, now you got have me mercy. hot water. That's the line, too. The line was, Mr. Narcissist, tell, tell me about my arrogance. No more counseling. I don't negotiate. With therapists. With therapists. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I want I want Kanye West to go out there and get the help, you know, that he needs. But if he's going to throw a middle finger to the help, <laughs> what am I supposed to it do? They say he's upset with Kim Kardashian because she's creating boundaries and wants more privacy. It has nothing to do with co-parenting, but uh, he well, wants to be able to control her. Well, that's how I know he need more therapy. Because if you set boundaries with a person and that person gets mad at you setting boundaries, it's a, it's a prime example of, you know, that's why you need those boundaries. You know what I mean? 800-585-1051. We're asking if you just joined us. Kanye, uh, he said he wasn't invited to his daughter's party over the weekend. He said he asked Kim. He asked the nannies. He even asked Tristan. Uh, none of them gave him the address, but Travis gave him the address. He said thank you. So I don't believe any of this, by the way. If you were Travis, would you give him the address? What, you you, you think Tristan didn't? What you think? What you mean? What don't you believe? I think Con I think Kanye called somebody and they ain't answered the phone fast enough. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what I think happened. My I'm dead serious. I think Kanye rolled him by himself. You know what I'm saying? He don't have the assistant and nobody with him. And I think Kanye called somebody and they didn't answer the phone fast enough, so he took the Instagram. And then immediately those people hit him back and like, what are you doing? The address is such and such and such and such. And then he pulled up. That's what I believe happened. 800-585-1051. What would you do this if you were so Travis fun. Scott? Let's, let's talk about it. It's the Breakfast Club. I'm going in there. I'm 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 in Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking about Kanye West. Now, uh, Kanye, he was uh he was uh he said this on Instagram about his daughter's uh birthday party over the weekend. Yeah, I'm just wishing my daughter a public right. happy birthday. I wasn't allowed to know where her party was. I'm just putting this online because I need y'all support. I didn't call Kim, text the nannies. I got on the phone with Tristan. He he said, he asked Chloe, won't nobody give me the address to my daughter's birthday party right now? And that's going to imprint in her mind that I wasn't there for her. Then he said nobody would give him the address. But finally, Travis Scott, he said, gave him the address. Came Let's through. <laughs> Yo, I'm so happy right now. I just came from Shy's party. And I just got a shout out to Travis Scott for sending me the address and the time. So we're asking, what would you do if you were Travis Scott? 800 585 <laughs> You know what's crazy though? Because you God bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Even though I don't think this is really the whole story, what if Kanye would have came there and wild up? See? And then everybody would have been back on Travis's head like they were on Travis's head a couple of months ago. You know what I'm saying? And they would have been jumping on Travis saying, see, this is what Travis does. He causes problems. He incites riots. You know what I mean? They, so it's like it can go either way. His family would have said that. What you mean? The general public would have said that. Forget the family. Uh, <laughs> they call it a public opinion. Hello, who's this? Yo, what's good? Yo, it's Travis out of North Carolina. How y'all doing? What's up, brother? What you think? What's your thought? Definitely not giving Kanye the address to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Why you laughing, man? Because, bro, I feel so bad saying it, but it's funny because Kanye is wild, bro. Kanye is a wild dude, though. Like, you never, like, he can walk up in the party, you know, all low-key, you know, and just chill. 
And then all of a sudden, just snap on everybody, <laughs> like, trying to give me the address for my kid's party. Mm-mm. That's real. So, it's too risky for you. That, you know, so, like, you know, and you, I think you, I think I heard you say Travis Scott gave him the address, maybe? Mm-hmm. That's what he said, yep. Well, allegedly, if Travis Scott gave him the address, I would just be like, hey, bro, you know, I, I slide you to Addy. But you got to throw me on the verse. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Okay, now, stop it. Bye. Goodness gracious. But, I mean, he's right, though, as far as, you know, you don't want nothing to happen at the kid's party. Like, could you imagine your kid seeing you get thrown out your your own party, security handling? Hands and feet on that. Aggressively. (laughs) Aggressively. What if Chris Jenner said, I want security to remove Kanye West aggressively. aggressively. Goodness gracious. Tasha, good morning. Good morning. Hey, what, what are your thoughts? So, I've been in this situation before, sadly. Oh, boy. <laughs> but I don't think Travis Scott would let him in without anybody knowing. I, I feel agree. like somebody else probably would have told him. I agree. I don't think Travis would make that decision. Or he just has to act like clueless about it. He'd be like, yeah, oh, Kanye's on the way. He just hit me. Oh, what? Oh, I didn't know y'all wasn't. Also, <laughs> also, where was Kanye on the way to in the first video? In the first video, he was yelling and screaming. He had some address in that GPS. Y'all ain't hated GPS yeah, in the did, background. I did. I heard, I heard so he was headed somewhere. Please make left now. I did. Yeah. Sound to me like he already had daddy. I don't know. Yeah. So you think he acting? Yep, he Probably. already had it. All right. Well, thank you, mama. Thank you. I, I, I think we're missing. There's a big piece of something missing from this story. We're only getting one side. You know, right. but I do know that 2022 is all about boundaries. I told y'all that at the beginning of the year. That's why I keep recommending the book, Set Boundaries, Find Peace, A Guide to Reclaiming Yourself by Dr. Nadra Glover Tawab. And I need y'all to know, and any therapist or psychiatrist will tell you this, people uh, who don't respect boundaries are usually manipulative, narcissistic, and have a poor sense of self. And they tend to repeatedly violate your personal boundaries, period. Well, Kanye said he doesn't negotiate with therapists. He also said he's a narcissist. So what does that tell you? Mr. Narcissist, tell me about my arrogance. No more counseling. I don't negotiate with therapists. What did I just tell you? I just told you people who constantly violate your boundaries are manipulative and narcissistic. He also said he's going to beat Pete Pete Davis's ass. Narcissist. Well, God bless him. So you with Pete Davis, right? That's your guy. You you and Pete hanging out, right? Kanye comes up to him and swim. I'm not going to let either one of them fight. Both of them, they make, first of all, both of them making too much money. Number one. But if he does swim, you jumping him? No, I'm jumping in front of the punch and I'm going to hit, I'm going to land just like this. Boom! <laughs> and I'm going to show that paparazzi how to just stay there. Yo, get him off the floor, man. I'm going to be here for months. God didn't hit you, man. God just hit me. He didn't hit you, man. He just hit me. And I'm going to go, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Goodness gracious. Yeah, we got rumors on the way. Jesus spit on me. I can't <laughs> Jesus spit on me. What's wrong with you? Yeah, we got rumors on the way. Yes, and let's talk about these That's claims. Stupid. This rapper is saying that other artists don't want to be on the same record with him because they cannot F with him. We'll see what you think. But I'm just saying, if he does hit you, I'm falling on the floor, too, no matter where I'm I am not in this moving. world. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm, I'm falling on the floor. All right, rumors next is The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just in. All the guys. Gossip, gossip. The rumor report. Gossip, gossip. With Angela, Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. Well, NLE Chapa was strolling through the airport, and this all happened yesterday, and they said a man started a fight with him mm-hmm. out of nowhere, and then that person later said that he beat his ass. And there's video footage, though, and in the footage you can see that NLE Chapa is the only one that actually landed a punch. Now, NLE Chapa went on social media with a post and delete. It's a difference from getting hit and falling than fighting in flip-flops and falling on your own. I fell throwing a punch. I didn't get hit. I was on the way down, and my backpack is 20 pounds. Buddy's lip is swole. Then he said, I be at peace, minding my business, but the devil work overtime to bring negativity to someone who seeks positivity, begging you all to leave me alone. I'm not one of them, no matter how much I've changed. I'll put anybody under. I got a daughter, a son on the way, and a family. Family to feed. That's why you can't believe anything you hear or see on the internet because there's always just one side. Because that dude jumped out there and was like, I beat NLE Chopper ass. And the woman was in the background, he knocked NLE Chopper out. Well, then video. you see the other video and realize yeah. it didn't even go down like now, that. Now, Mama Chopper, NLE Chopper's mother and manager, actually responded and she did this post a couple of hours ago. Fans, you, you got to stop running up in folk face. I agree. Facts. Everybody's not friendly as you think they are. Number one. Number two, a person should be able to go to the restroom without it being you jumping into an altercation once you come out the restroom. You will start at the initial attack because you jumping at somebody, so if that's a threat, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to defend myself, right? You go on the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just got into a fight with NLE Chopper. I just knocked him out. Stop the cap. Number one, you never touched him. He slipped because he got on slides by ducking from you when you swung and you missed. He didn't miss. He landed. But my whole point is this. Y'all gonna get enough of running up on folks because rappers and entertainers and everybody's tired. Y'all doing too much. Let your security shoot him. I guess he was going to the bathroom, though, in the airport. No, in the airport. And they said he had his headphones in. And where are these, where, where are these airports that people just be fighting at? I be looking <laughs> online, and I just be seeing people fighting at the airport. Don't yeah. you get locked up for that? Yes. And you get charged. And they had a charges. federal offense. You can't Absolutely. ride the planes no more? Yes. So who going to turn this man in? Give me the tape. Y'all don't know. Give me the tape so I can turn this guy in. All right. Now, T.I. says that he is uh, he's the best, as he should think. And he said that nobody wants to be on the same record with him. Here he is on his live. I heard that ain't never happened. Never had nobody me. Jay and Nas, yeah, you need to bring them. Bring them. Jay, Nas, Wayne, Yay. That who you need. Bring them. Pusha T, yeah, all them. That who you need. Keep me trying to got there. Throw my name in the circle in the in the mix with nobody. Man, ain't nobody with me. I own my own studio. I rap when I want to. I go and make music when I feel like it. Put that shit just for you to hear it, just to know. Damn, this nigga still wrong. Yes, ain't nobody with me. What where did this conversation come? Was it a versus convo talk or was it just I was I was confused. I think he just was expressing his feelings and the being <clears> in <throat> conversations with the Kanye and the Jay Z and mm -hmm. the Nas and the Wayne and the Pusha T, all mm -hmm. of them. Y'all been working with me for eleven years. Y'all know I have a top seven favorite rappers of all time. Ti is in my top seven. He didn't tell one lie. Let's argue. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. We can debate all day. Okay, y'all gonna stop sleeping on Clifford Harris catalog. Argue about what? I don't know what the debate is. Oh. But y'all gonna stop sleeping on Clifford Harris catalog. I know that catalog. I would love to see No, there was definitely a debate in social media after this. What was the debate? They be playing with T.I.'s musical name, and I don't understand why. But that anytime somebody says something like that, people always weigh in. I mean, it is what it is. He definitely has. T.I. has smashes. He has records. He's a lyricist. He gets busy. There's nothing he can't doubt that with T.I. There's nothing he can't do on the record. Same with those other people that he named, too. You want street records? You want records that make you think? You want party records? You want radio records? You want records for the ladies? You want lyrical records? What you want? Clifford Harris can give you all of it. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. He mentioned uh, Pusha T, too. Pusha T got some records. Oh, my gosh. I heard Pusha got some joints. Oh, coming. my gosh. Pusha got some records. I heard he got a, a great album on the way. Whoa. All right. I can't wait to get those get those on. All right. Well, let's get to the People's Choice Mix. 800-585-1051. Let me know what you want to hear. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Whoa. Wake up. Wake up. Get up. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Hey, what up, y'all? It's DJ Envy here. It's all fun and games till someone screenshots your message. Say goodbye to morning after guilt with that chat. This new encrypted social platform can help you stay truly private. No screenshots, recordings, or leaked messages. Get that chat for iPhone and Android at the App Store or find it at datchat.com forward slash envy. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Um, I texted Eddie and Charlamagne over the weekend, and both of you brothers didn't reply back to me. And I, I, I kind of take it kind of. Well, know, me and Eddie personal. was talking amongst each other because we decided that there's no need to be talking about football with somebody whose team didn't make the playoffs. Eddie's an Eagle fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. You're a Giants fan. So for you to jump into the chat with slander made no sense. I didn't though. slander. I didn't slander. Just didn't, I just. I said, actually thought somebody. I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought. Eddie lost somebody because you just, when I saw the I saw the text and he was like, "Yo, I'm sorry for your loss, whatever." I was like, "Damn, Eddie lost somebody." I literally thought that. No, I said because I was like, "There's no lost. way you could be possibly talking about football." Not a guy whose team was four and twelve. I just said, "I'm sorry for your." So y'all you have something in common. Nobody's team made it, right? That My team true. was in the playoffs. I, Eddie's team was in the playoffs. I know but nobody tough. made it. Our teams played this weekend. Just okay. understand, I'm here for you guys. I just want to let y'all know. Your I'm team, here for you. the Giants, didn't even make the playoffs. Why are you talking about the past? We talking about the future. Where y'all at next week? Where the Cowboys? Yes. I don't know. Who knows what the Cowboys are <laughs> So who's going to win the Super Bowl? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? That's a good question. I'm going to go, I think, either the Rams. I like the Rams. I like Green the Bay. I like the Bucks too, though. Rams, Green Bay, or Tampa would probably be yeah. my three, three, three people that I would go with. It, it, Tampa's so many injuries with Tampa, so I don't know. If you had to pick one, who's going to win? Let's do a prediction now. You, you can't. I, mean, I don't know. You I, can I, never I, count Tom Brady out. Uh, yeah. I think the Rams, I think Rams, I don't Rams know. Rams look good though. Rams, Green Bay, Tampa, one of those three. I don't know. I really don't know. 
All right. Who's your team, Ye? I don't, you know. I didn't really. Did I pick a team this year? No. Okay. Did I pick a team this year? Pick That's not how now. this works. <laughs> All right. All right. When we come back, positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, um, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do. And I keep telling y'all, man, 2022 is all about boundaries, man. That's what it's all about. So I just want to reiterate this point if I haven't made it clear already. The only people who get upset about you setting boundaries are the ones who are benefiting from you having none. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done? 